that every one of us could be in this place today. Because a lot of times we come to God as if He doesn't love us or if He's mad at us. And you know, by the cross He displayed the love that He had for us, that every one of us could sit here today without condemnation and without the effects of sin in our life. And Romans 6 says we are dead to sin, we're alive to Christ. As He was crucified, it says that we were crucified in Him, that we would be raised up in newness of life. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You are no longer the old man. In Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, it says that you are a new creation. The old's passed away. You know, we've come to a place where we are born again, where we no longer have to look at condemnation or look at the things that we used to do. And a lot of times we come to God and we want to offer our old life when he's saying you can't offer your old life. The old wine skin cannot contain the new glory that he's going to do. Amen. So I'm, I'm calling you just as the saints of God to stop looking at yourself as what you've done and what he what he has done and what he's accomplished is who you are now. It's no longer based on law. It says that Sarah was getting impatient basically with Abraham. You know, it said that they would have a son, Isaac. It says the, the son of promise. And yet it says she, she got where she was just getting uh, impatient and she said, why don't you just have the son with Hagar, you know, do do the fleshly thing, do it in your own works because God's not coming through is basically what she was thinking when the angel came to Abraham and said, you know, you will have a son, it says she laughed and then when he when he came again you know, she had a son but she tried to do it in her own strength and it talks about the law mentality that we try to take things into our own hands, we try to be righteous by what we've done, we try to be righteous by what we're doing for God instead of doing it with him and being obedient to what he's already told us. It says that the bond woman has to be cast out, the mindset of the law, the mindset of I can do it God, I can please you with things that I've been working on, the mindset of well I have to do it myself when God said it's by promise that Abraham will be the father of many nations. It said his seed was Christ. So when Christ came, we became the children and we became children of promise, not of law. In fact, the law was not for Gentiles, it says. It was for the promised people that called us uncircumcision. In Ephesians 2.11, it says that we were without hope in the world. We were without God. And that God in his love, it says that he sent his only begotten son, that we could become children of God, that we could become stained, our stained and the beaten bodies as the video, you know, it shows Jesus and it shows the woman that they said was in adultery. And it says that every Pharisee, the law mentality, wanted to come and stone her, wanted to come and put her to death because the law says that if you sin, you shall be put to death. It says the law came through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus. Jesus stands there with grace and he says, you who are without sin, go ahead and cast the first stone. Every one of us has sinned. Every one of us has been in the place of reaching for his feet and asking for mercy and he looks at her and he helps her back up and it says everybody left because they could not cast a stone they couldn't cast a stone because grace had come grace and truth jesus came and he said go and sin no more grace isn't an ability to allow you to sin it's an ability to make you become who god's created you to be and the strong i'll read it to you what it says in the strong because grace is you know a lot of times we've been it's been misinterpreted, you know, to just do whatever you want and God will give you grace, but it's not. It says, Grace is the goodwill, loving kindness, favor of the merciful kindness by which God, exerting his holy influence upon souls, turns them to Christ, keeps, strengthens, increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtues. It says that we cannot come to Jesus unless he first draws us. So every person in this room has been given grace to the place that, you know, as the woman in adultery or the prodigal son, you know, we've went and we've tried to spend everything that he's given us. And yet he comes and he says, you know, we come to God with this slave mindset that, you know, we have to come as a slave now. We cannot be righteous because we've taken what God has poured out into us and we've tried to, you know, he went and he lived However, he wanted to spend his life inheritance. It said that he was actually to the point that he was wanting to eat what pigs were wanting to eat. And then it says he came to his senses and he said, Even my father's slaves or my father's hired men have more than I have right now. And he goes back, and a lot of times this is how we go to God with this slave mentality. I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but 
It says the father saw him from a long way off. It doesn't say that he came to him. He said he came, he saw him from a long way off and ran to him. And this son, of course, he says, Lord, I'm not worthy to be called a son. You know, Jesus is really our only identity. When we come to the place where we're in Christ, we have our identity. Nothing can steal our identity because we're seated above every principality, every power in this age and the age to come. So it's, you know, we are not uh, affected or we're not portrayed or made into what people think we are called or think that we might be because, like I said, we're a new creation. It says that we should no longer look at anybody in the flesh. Even Jesus, we no longer look at him as if he's on the cross, but he's been glorified. He's been glorified. And even as he's been glorified, it says we will have a glorified body. Yes, so I, I just want to encourage you that the slave mentality, the Antichrist, I believe, is trying to take your eyes off Jesus to make your own righteousness, which it says no flesh can be justified by law or by works. So it's it's basically Satan trying to take your eyes off of Jesus to make it that you have to earn your way like the slave mentality that I'm no longer worthy to be a, a son. But it says, like I say, he ran to him, he embraces him, he doesn't acknowledge that he's saying I don't, Want, you know, I'm not worthy to be a son. He says, go and give him the best robe, give him the ring, give him the best shoes, and kill the fattened calf that we can celebrate that my son was lost, but now he's found. See, grace doesn't doesn't penalize you for what you've done. It's, it gives you a new start. Yes. Because everyone, like I said, every one of us has failed God. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, it says. But as we behold him, it says, and Gary and Fran were singing about Isaiah, you know, 6, as Isaiah beheld the Lord, that's when true repentance comes. It doesn't come when I try to tell you where you're missing things. It comes when you behold the Lord, and it says, he fell to the ground, and he said, woe is me, I'm undone. Because when you come into the presence of the Lord, when you behold his face, that you see that he is light, and that his light just shows everything that is in us, that is darkness, and just, it purges us of everything that we could even try to be. And yet we fall to his feet and we say we're undone because we've been touched by God. We've been shown his face and it says that no man can live. But you know, we're not supposed to live. We're crucified with Christ. It's no longer us that should live. It's him that's, you know, we should be just as Jesus was walking. He didn't walk with a man's agenda. It says, you know, we see him crucified. It says that he laid down his life. No man took it from him. It says he freely laid it down, and he had the power to bring it back up again. And he has the power to bring you back up again when you feel like you've been brought down low and you feel like everything's coming against you. And yet he says, it's all right, I've paid for it. And yet a lot of times, like I said, we have this law mentality that we have to earn grace or earn God's love when it was freely given. Freely we've received. Freely we are to give. That's why it says, come as a child. You'll never see a child go to their mother or father and say, I'm sorry. What can I do to earn your love? They may, you know, come, as it says, when we were young, we had a childlike mindset. It says the law was our guardian. We come to God a lot of times, and a child will come to their parents, you know, it's to be accepted at one point, to know what's wrong and right, because we're given a guardian, a tutor, to teach us the things that are right or wrong. But then it says, when we grow up and we put away childish things, we put away the law mentality of right and wrong and we take on relationship. See, a child will do right and wrong, but after a while it will take on relationship where, you know, it says we can be guided by his eye. It says that when he looks at us, we'll be able to tell what he does, wants us to do and what he's wanting us to know. And that is where he's wanting to take every one of us in this place. It's not, again, by what you've done. You're not qualified by works you're qualified by blood of christ it says without his remission of blood that all of us would be in our sins when hebrews 9 14 said he's cleansed us from the old works and he's given us the conscious freshly new in the old law they would sacrifice goats lambs and their conscience would still have that remembrance of sin every year they would have to deal with what they've done the year before but when Christ came, it said it cleansed your conscience of dead works so that you could serve the living God. So every one of us does not have to look back. In fact, he says, forget the things that are behind. Paul says, I look forward to the high call of Christ Jesus, that I may attain it, that I may take hold of him who is taking hold of me. And I just, um, 
like I said, I want to encourage you guys to take your eyes off of you as you know, Billy preached about Peter, which I believe is a great example of the Christian walk. As we step out on the word that Jesus says, and as we keep our eyes on him, we can do the impossible. But as soon as our eyes are taken off of Jesus, as we look at circumstances, as we look at anything except Jesus, we start to fall and we start to sink. And then, again, he takes him and he doesn't rebuke him hard. He says, you have little faith, why did you doubt? You know, faith, Jesus is author and finisher of faith. So when he looks at Jesus, he's seeing the author and finisher of his faith. His face is, is becoming, as he steps out to Jesus, his faith becomes because Jesus said, come. So he could walk on the word that Jesus said, and that is why he could step out. You know, it says, all of creation is longing for the eager manifestation of the sons of God. So he was walking in the exact will that Jesus had for him at that time, and that is why creation had to do the impossible for man. He stepped on water, which is impossible for man, but it was because he stepped into the very will of God for him in that in that circumstance. I just, um, while I was praying, you know, I, um, I just felt like God wanted me to share some things. Um, you can actually turn the music up a little bit. I just like having background music. But let us pray. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your Son as you have showed us that he died for us, that he took our place, that we should have been the ones on the cross, Father. And I thank you that was because of your son that we are here today and that is because of your son that we can gather as a body of believers God that you've torn down the veil and that you've torn down the wall of hostility between Jewish and Gentiles that we could be included in this great salvation that you have put in our in our lives and just called us into your your plan father and I just I'm asking the Holy Spirit that you would come in this place and convict hearts and give hope and give faith in that Holy Spirit you would speak through me in such a way that people will be radically changed. Father, I thank you that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled, God. It's a yeah. promise that you said, and Father, I'm asking if people don't have a hunger that you would renew it even right now, God. That you would renew the first love that we may have had when we first got saved. Father, I thank you that, Father, you are love itself, Father, and I thank you that as we behold you, we become as you are. That, Father, it's it's your great plan, and it, it's you who's at work in every one of these people and, and me. And I thank you, Father, for the opportunity to share your your word and just to be a vessel for you in Jesus' name. I just wanted to, you know, um, the time we're in is a very important time. You know, it says the prophets, the apostles, they really looked into the time that Jesus was portraying through the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament that things which would come to pass. It says that they knew that it wasn't for them, which was Christ in you, the hope of glory is the mystery that's been revealed. It's Christ in you that lives through you, that gives you the ability to live a godly life as opposed to, like you said, the Old Testament where it was law-based. And like I said, where you would have a remembrance of your sin, where Jesus just said, it is finished. You know, no longer do you have to be a slave to sin. In fact, if you're in condemnation, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So I just release you from condemnation that you will no longer look at your past as trying as the enemy or whatever tries to, you know, tell you that you're not qualified. You know, he's qualified every one of us. The only work that we really have to do would be 629, John 629, that we believe in him who he has sent. So I'm, you know, Jesus is the law fulfilled, the prophets fulfilled, and now we get the joy of being the body of Christ here on the earth. You know, it's our, well, uh, Todd White always says, you know, we were supposed to just go to heaven, you know, when we got saved, we'd beam up in heaven, we wouldn't be on earth anymore. So heaven is our destination, but the earth is our mission field. You know, eternal life is actually described in John 17 3 that we would know the one true God and Jesus Christ who he, has, who he has sent so it's all about relationship with the Father it's all about sonship with the Father that we would put away you know anything that is offensive to him and take on this new life that is led by the Holy Spirit and you know he's very much real he's very much a part of the Trinity he's very much in every one of us 
the Father and the Son abide in us because we are a temple of the Holy Ghost. So every one of you has every ability, every type of, you know, the power working in within you to do the will of God in every aspect of your life. But um, again, I had, I just feel like if uh, someone had like some spleen uh, issues, so Father, I just declare that that will be healed. I thank you, and also I felt like someone had a breathing problem or something with their lungs. So I'm declaring that you'll be healed. You know, what God reveals, it says that we can see him. But, you know, God heals. We are healed, actually. In his eyes, it's been finished. It's not that we have to work it up. He's, he's the author. He's a finisher. He's wounded for our transgressions, as you saw. And I don't believe that actually does justice to the way he was beaten. It says his beard was plucked out. It said you could not even recognize him. And yet, you were the reason that he did that. You know, the enemy would like to... You know, tell people you're not important or God doesn't love you, but the cross is the significance of God's love. It said, you know, Christ is the mystery. Christ is the fullness of God's love for us. The cross, he disarmed every ruler and authority, and he made you free. You know, it's for freedom that Christ set us free. It says not that we can, again, go into the bondage of the law, but to be free. And that means that we can be free from thoughts of, people you know we were never meant to earn love from people we were meant to love our neighbor as ourself as we view God we begin to see who we are we begin to love others as we love ourselves which if you hate yourself you can't love others like you love yourself we have to get to a point that we love ourselves. that's not weird but it, you know it's if we love our neighbor as ourself we have to have love for ourselves. we were never intended to be loved by others as much as we were to be loved by God. God is love. That's where we become love. That's where we behold love. That's why the secret place, as you know, Pastor Sandy was talking about, is where we behold Him. You know, it's, it's good to come into a service, but it says those, and I'm not saying you practice your righteousness, but it says you already get been given your reward. But when we seek Him in the secret place, He says He will reward us openly. Amen. And He's calling us all to a deeper place of just intimacy a deeper place of knowing him of knowing who we are so that we can portray him in the world because the world doesn't want to see you know just words you know paul says we are the living epistle we are a living epistle read by all men so it's not what you say it's how you live if you're living Amen. what you're saying Amen. it will speak a lot louder than what you say because it's Amen. it's easy to speak you know jesus didn't say i love you he died on a cross and that was his language Amen. of love Amen. But again, I'm going to get into this. Um, uh, Fran and Gary, I just felt, you know, Proverbs 8, 17, it says, Those who love me and seek me will inherit substance. And, you know, I just feel like God's given you substance in the secret place of your worship and just in the place of your life. And just to keep on pressing forward and not to uh, be discouraged if it feels like you've hit a wall, but just keep on pushing forward. It says that Jesus is the forerunner into the Holy of Holies. He's torn down the wall that we can come with him. He's the forerunner, as John was the forerunner of repentance, that people would be able to see God. So just continue to just keep on pressing and keep on going forward and just keep on going into a deeper intimacy with the Lord. And he will just continue to give you substance and you'll inherit the substance and love of God. And, uh, Jen, I just uh, feel like, I don't know if you felt like your ministry is slowing down or whatever, but I just feel like God's place in strategic points like a uh, general would be on a map with just the red little text and he said he's really he's going to give you a new message of just love and that you're not going to have to reach toward his feet but he's going to give you a face and face face to face encounter where you're going to look into his eyes and just behold the love that he has for you instead of reaching toward his feet to hopefully touch his love but you're going to again look into his eyes and really behold his love as in a, a husband type love he'll be the husband that you you know, been praying for or haven't had, you know, and he's just going to be that husband to you and just love you and heal all the hurt that may not have, you know, been dealt with. And he's just going to just bring complete healing. Um, you know, I, I feel like someone may have a heart condition. Maybe it's even an irregular beat, whatever, but I feel like God's going to heal your heart. And some people are cutting their heart from past uh, relationships, past things, and God's going to heal your heart. Yes. 
I want to remind you that the devil will always remind you of your past yeah. or what you're going through now. Peter says that the one who has forgotten that he is forgiven cannot see far off. His sight is short sight. So if you think of the devil, he's never been given forgiveness. Jesus, or the Father, doesn't talk about past. He talks about future plans. Jeremiah 29 11, I have a plan for you, plans to prosper. Plans are far in advance. He doesn't look at the shortcomings. He doesn't look at the here and now so much as he does the future. Because like I said, those who are forgiven see far sighted. So as we begin to really grasp the fact that we are forgiven, we begin to see as he sees, not not short term plans, but long term plans, you know, to prosper and to give you a future. So I just um you know, the enemy will try to remind you of your past and he'll try to remind you of your future or you're going to fail because you did this. But, you know, John 8, 44 says that his very nature is a lie, that he speaks no truth, that, you know, everything that comes from him is not truth. It's a lie. You know, I, I really love the grace of God because, like I said, it says that we were without hope. And yet God still died for us while we were in the world. We did not know God, nor were we known by God. But you know, he sent Peter to Cornelius. And even Peter said, uh, how can I go to something that's unclean? And he says, what I've cleansed will you call unclean. So he's called us clean. Every person in this room is, you know, how righteous is the righteousness of God? It's spotless. It says, David says, you purge my sins whiter than snow. Have you ever seen snow? It's, it's, you know, you cannot make something whiter than snow. It's white. And yet Jesus has purged our sins that were whiter than snow. All we have to do is come to him and believe that he is who he is. It doesn't matter again what we've done. The enemy would love for you to say, I have to get to a certain point. I have to do this. I have to do that. But Jesus is calling you to come as you are. And he'll set you free. He'll deliver you. He'll do whatever you need for him to do for you because he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder, but you have to believe that he is what you need. It's Hebrews 11.6. Those who come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And faith, I believe, is from communication. If we read... Romans 10, it says that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Word would be the rhema, the spoken word of God. So as we really press into God, we become able to listen to his voice. And that in turn produces faith. As Peter stepped out of the boat, he didn't just step out in the hope that he would be able to walk on water or would have sunk. He had a spoken word from God that said, come, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come out on the sea. So he said, okay. And he's stepped out on the word of God which produced faith and that's just the place I believe God wants to take us is where like Jesus said I only do what I see my father doing I only say what I said hear my father saying and that's the, the true you know son of God that will be led by the spirit in all aspects I'm just going to close with you know when you see a river you can't tell where a river or the water you know you can't really tell if a it's the bank or the water that begins or ends. And that's really, I believe, what God wants us to do with the Spirit is flow in such a way that no one can tell the difference. That it's Him that's living and working through us and we just, we're just along for the ride in a way. You know, He does what He wants to do and we're just the vessel. But, um, does anybody have knee problems? Father, I just ask that you would touch knees in this place, Father. I thank you. Even the spines in this place, God, that back pain would have to go in Jesus' name. I thank you that even right now, God, you're touching backs, that you're touching knees as well. Father, I thank you that you would just release a kingdom mindset in this place. That, God, we would no longer be people that seek the things of this world, but, God, that we would give our life for the gospel. And I just thank you, Jesus, and uh, thank Pastor Sandy for the opportunity to to share. I um, I trust that you've been you know, encouraged or you know, hopefully been given a new mindset of who you are. And um, 
know if it's okay, I guess uh, people on prayer I can pray or agree with you. But uh, altar is going to be open for prayer or encouragement, whatever you need. <laughs>